hindsight, a lot of people wonder whether you broke up Rockefeller. Mm-hmm. I would say, you know, a lot of times I would say I did, but not purposely. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't say that I did it purposely. I met one time in Dame because they like, he keeps shouting you and Biggs out, and not me. Biggs and Dame is from 142nd, and I'm from 140th Street. We grew up two blocks away from each other. I don't really know you that well. And then they got mad when Dame offered me the yeah. president job. A lot of people got offended. But if I'm in the building and I'm learning the business quicker and faster than everybody else in the building, and Dame knows that I'm going to take care of the day-to-day activity, why not take the job, even though it never we never worked it out financially? We did some math between me and my lawyers, and the president of Def Jam at that particular time was getting $850,000 a year to run it. So I was like, since Rockefeller is kind of the biggest label on Def Jam, I was asking for 500000 a year to run it, but they didn't want to give me that much money, so I just debted the whole situation anyway. Uh-huh. But I, I definitely had the job if I wanted it, but the, we couldn't get the financial part together. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, so you, you do accept it. Yeah, I'll take that. I mean, I <laughs> didn't, kinda... it isn't like I went in there and was like, yo, damn, stop fucking with Jay, this, mm-hmm. that, and the third, you shouldn't fuck with him. I just think, but you got to realize, too, before we got there, because Kanye wasn't even there before he got there, and... They can say what they want to say, but Jay ain't never really had nobody come selling a million records on his label. You know what I'm saying? Bleak and Beans and everybody in state property, he kind of kept them underneath him. To whereas when we got there, we got the biggest, it wasn't no record on Rockefeller that got 15,000 spins. And then Old Boy came out, got 18, I mean, pardon me, Old Boy 15,000 spins. Then Haymar came out, and I got 18,000 spins. Then we sold a multi platinum album. It's like, what person on Rockefeller did that, mm. period, ever. It's like even with Kanye, you know, Kanye is over there, he's selling way more records than Jay-Z now, you know what I'm saying? And it's certain, if you ever, that's why I love the song you did, Big Brother, if you listen to it, he'll say how he couldn't get tickets to a show or mm-hmm. he couldn't do X, Y, Z. And if you listen to little stuff Jay-Z says, he'll still play it off like you, my little brother. But at the end of the day, he's your big brother because he's selling way more records singing then you are rapping. Now Jimmy is the one beefing with, with Jay. Is that, you know, what what are your thoughts on that? To me, I mean, whatever, you know, I'm not really, I don't really know about right. their situation. I don't really care about how they beefing or what's the beef about. I don't have nothing to do with that. But just in general, and this isn't towards Jim or anybody else but Jay, just me personally, as a businessman and as a fan of rap and so on and so forth, it's nothing to me. I wouldn't beef with Jay now unless he said my name and I really had to get at him. The dude did a, a deal for $150 million with no label. Like You know what I'm saying? You get $82 million for signing a, his piece of Rockefeller off and then took a job probably getting $10 million a year. So as a hustler looking at Jay-Z, I, ain't, I don't got nothing to do but respect that dude. You know, the last time that I, I actually saw you was at Flex's car show and one of the first things that you said to me um, was you know that I sold Joel's contract for two million dollars mm-hmm. that statement really made him upset but and you just see what felt, you said though mm-hmm. you sold Joel's contract for two million I think he's going like you sold me I'm not a slave you know what I'm saying I heard that on the radio you just said it right you sold Joel's contract I don't know what you want me to call it if you want me to say another word for sold his contract then I would say another word, but if that's what I did, I don't know whatever word to use for sold somebody's contract. I didn't say I sold him or you was my slave. I didn't say, hey, yo, minion, hey, what's up? You know that slave I used to have, Jewels, I gave him to the master. No, I didn't say that. I mm-hmm. sold his contract for the money. Playing devil's advocate, mm-hmm. I think that for Jewels, at least in a lot of the interviews that he's doing now, he feels that... Um, he was a loyal member of Dipset for many years, and he feels that he was uh, not being compensated during that time. There seems to be like overall like well, disgruntled it, when, when feelings. It's um, it's January, right? When was the car show? That was back in June. Um, yeah. It was so it's going on about eight and nine months, right? He been out the contract. What's going? On? Who's holding them up now? You understand what I'm saying? What's holding you up now? If somebody's holding you up, you still haven't put out no singles, you still haven't scheduled an album date. But the original story what happened with Juels is that Juels started drinking Scissor, Robitussin. You know what I'm saying? He got hooked on it, addicted to it. You go to his studio, he has a Hawaiian, like a hundred Hawaiian punches already pre-mixed with this stuff in it. You know what I'm saying? 
So I was kind of like, stop speaking to him. Like, yo, we already smoked mad weed. We don't need to be on Robitussin. I called his mother about it. I called his closest friends about it. They knew it, knew mm -hmm. about it. They was like, Nick Cam, it's not that bad. It isn't like he's overdoing it. And I'm like, yo, that's like saying he just smoked a little bit of crack. You know what I'm saying? It ain't that mm -hmm. much crack. It's just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of how I shot away from Jewels. It was even a point when Jim called me like, yo, what's going on with you and Jewels? What's happening? Because he keep calling me all the time. I said, he's on drugs. He's sipping Robitussin every day. I, I mean, I'm not knocking anybody who does it, but we're not from Houston. We're not from the South. That isn't really our culture and how we grew up. And I, I've been dealing with Jewels since he's 15 or 16, so I always looked at him like my little brother. Mm -hmm. So he kind of chose to scissor. You understand what I'm saying? And when was this? Mm, what's this? Might be about a year and a half. Whenever you stop seeing me and Jewels together anywhere, that's when he started doing the scissor. Um, you said that you talked to his peoples, but did you ever have a conversation with him because you guys did have such a yeah? I talked to him about it definitely. He'll, he'll tell me he wasn't doing it. You know, mm -hmm. he'll tell me he wasn't doing it. Of course, he was. He's not gonna admit that he's doing it. But when I spoke to his mother, and his mother knew about it already. And the people that surround him, I don't want to get into other names besides right. his mother, mm -hmm. and they're telling me that, nah, it isn't that bad, da 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 I'm like, oh, so this is a problem, especially, like I said, if your mother knew about it. And she was definitely, not that she approved of it or anything, you know, she was totally against it. But just in general, I would, what kind of person would I be not to say anything or not to kind of isolate him? Not that I didn't want to be a friend or whatever, but I kind of was isolating him just to let you know, I'm not dealing with you if you do this. But we started speaking after that. You know, I mean, it wasn't tight, tight, but, you know, I'll call him maybe once a month after the situation with the syrup and everything like that. We spoke maybe a month and a half, two months before they got on stage with the 50 Cent thing. Maybe we spoke on the phone maybe a month and a half, two months before that. And just after that 50 Cent thing, that was like the last straw for me. But Do you still consider yourself dipset? Like, that's, that was another thing that people used to be like, yo, Cam is not dipset yet. How am I, the owner of the company, not going to be dipset? Whether the people that's in the group or whatever feel a certain type of way or whatever the case may be, you know, that's the way you feel, but there's no way Cam isn't dipset. That doesn't make sense. Is there a dipset? Of course, the dipset's forever. I told you, it's like a last name. Like, once you got it, you, you, can't, get, you can't get away from it. It's like being a Williams or a Smith or a Jones or a Jeremiah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But Does that mean that um, are Jimmy and Joel's also still dipset? 